language in our master agreements with both uh, ECTA and EXO um, contain a lot of language that is specific to four day versus five day and what types of contracts people have. So there is, uh, we would have to, we would have to amend all of our master agreements um, for those schools that would change. Uh, so that's one element. Again, not a major thing. Um, Natasha's here and so is Michelle. And, um, but it, like we would have to convene with them and, and work on um, how that would go. Uh, and then those have to get approved by their organizations and, and that sort of thing. Uh, next up, quite a laborious process is our contracts for all the teachers um, that serve in those, that, that work in those schools. Um, central office would have to, we, we produce individual contracts for everybody, all of the certified staff that work for us. So that would require us to produce a new contract for every employee and have those signed and returned. That usually is a multi-week process and just getting that done for, for each school. Uh, the next thing can't be done until that is done and that is payroll. Uh, when you move from uh, full five day school to four day school, your length of your contract moves from 100 and, um, 180, 181, 184, okay, thanks. We have so many different length contracts. So 184 down to a 156, six, okay, thank you. Um, I feel like I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. Um, 180s to 150s, right, we gotta, we gotta change that. So when you do that, every, every, uh, every employee's contract then has to be recalculated because now we're dividing whatever number by whatever number. And I know it sounds like, oh, well, that's easy. Just boom, 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 and you're done. But uh, it's it's a lengthy process that people have to manually punch in those numbers, and uh, so it totally affects how payroll would be able to pay our staff. Um, typically, when we do that process uh, for, like, when we ended last year going into this year, we begin doing that in about April, and we really do our very, very best to get it done by the end of May. So it's it's a it's a six plus week process. Now that's for the whole district, right? So we wouldn't be talking about doing that for the whole district, but it's it takes time. And, and, and every single one of those is done individually. Um, state approval is required. Uh, we, back in April, I wanna say maybe that first meeting in April, uh, we had our, we, Josh, um, Farmer, uh, who I labeled at that time as our calendar wizard, which I've been made fun of for <laughs> since then, Josh puts those together and he gathers information from schools about their start times, their end times, the number of days, when the holidays are. Those calendars are, are put together and they have to be approved by the state. So um, any alteration of any kind to what has been approved does require uh, resubmitting and waiting on approval from the state before we could um, make that move. Um, technically, you can do that, um, but it's not normal. You, you kind of submit your calendar for the next year and you move forward with it. Which is why if you were to look through board agendas from uh, when Wells became a four-day school, when Wendover became a four-day school, when Jackpot became a four-day school, when Carlin became a four-day school, you would probably find that it was usually the months of September, October, and November when those items were on the agenda, when they got passed, and then the remainder of that school year was used to start to move all these pieces to get that ready for the next year so we could submit all that in a timely manner. From a, this one uh, actually made my brain hurt when I thought about it, because I, you know, I was, it's only a year that I left the site as a principal, but um, I still remember all the things I had to do. Uh, every site has a master schedule, and those master schedules uh, very much are different, whether you're a four-day school or a five-day school. Um, it's not just about the days, number of days, it's based on your staffing, your student enrollment, your course offerings, the length of your day, which would change when you change schedules, transportation for the outlying, uh, you know, for outlying areas, sometimes that's, that's a, an, an equation, but it definitely affects our transportation in town uh, and, and in Spring Creek. Um, it would, it would, essentially it impacts every piece of a master schedule. Um, typically it's usually about, and I've got a bunch of principals over here, it's about February or March when we start working on a master schedule for the next school year, and we are updating it all throughout the summer. So to flip a master schedule um, in a couple of weeks is, would be a big ask of our site administrators. 
Um, additionally, every single student has an individual schedule and that is built individually in Infinite Campus. And so to change school would also require changing every single student's schedule after the master schedule is sorted out. So that's another site administrator slash counselor slash registrar uh, nightmare that would ensue once we did that. Where we are now, bus drivers are getting their final training. Uh, they're learning their routes as they currently exist so that on day one they're not standing on a piece of paper while they drive. They are learning what their route is. Um, and so we would uh, not only with transportation have to redo all of that, but then that would require all of our drivers to, because um, inherent in learning your route is the timing and all of that. So that's part of it. Uh, real big picture concern, and the same would go for food service as well. Um, is, uh, and I'll get to food service in a moment, but uh, the way our, this was brought up, I think when Spring Creek proposed this originally, is uh, our drivers, um, there's a sentiment that we would lose like a lot of them. Um, because not only is it a reduction in hours because you're driving four days instead of five, like it's still the same number of routes. It's, or, it, or it's, it, you still drive the same route, but it's four days instead of five. So whatever routes you had, how much hours you had over a five day period, it's now being reduced to a four day period. And not only would that be a reduction in work for them and in pay, um, but if that puts someone below part-time status, they no longer are benefited employees either, in which case um, there would potentially be the opportunity for someone to say, sign our own and go get a benefited job. Um, so concern for, for, from transportation for sure on that standpoint. Uh, and then the same would go for any employees of food service that are, that are ours, because um, some of them are SFP employees and some are Elko County employees, but from a benefit standpoint, um, the same would apply to them and the reduction in hours and, and that, that all applies to them as well. 